Hi students, welcome back. So as you know that we were discussing about design of brakes and in design of brakes, uh, we know that we have different types of brakes that is mechanical brakes, electrical brakes, uh, hydraulic brakes. So in our syllabus, we have mechanical brakes and in mechanical brakes also, uh, we will discuss about the design of block brakes. So let me uh, discuss with you the designing of block brakes. So first of all, uh, we categorize the block brake as block brake with short shoe and uh, block brake with long shoe. And how we will categorize both the uh, brakes? So as you can see in figure number two, uh, this is the angle which is made uh, in between the block and the brake drum. This is the drum and this is the block. So this whole angle uh, contact angle is two theta. So when this angle two theta is less than or equal to 45 degree, then such type of brakes are called as block brake with short shoe. And when this angle two theta is greater than 45 degree, then it is called as block brake with long shoe. So uh, the working of this block brake is in such a way that, uh, that this drum is rotating whether in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction. And this is the lever. So uh, this block, uh, which is rigidly attached with the lever, it consists of a friction lining. So this is your friction lining, which is attached with the block. And your block is rigidly attached with the lever. So what we have to do, our objective is to stop this drum or to reduce the speed of the drum by applying a force on the lever and then stopping the drum, okay, or reducing its speed. So this is your working of your block brake. Now, let me just uh, discuss one more point with you that in block brake, the pressure is uniform, okay, because the size of the block is, uh, or you can say the size of the block brake is short. So the uniform uh, pressure we can achieve here. But on the other hand, block brake with long shoe, since the curvature is more in, in uh, long shoe, so due to that long curvature, the pressure is not uniform, okay? And due to that, what happens, sometimes the friction lining, which is attached with the block, it rub sometimes more on one side and less from another side due to non-uniform pressure. And due to that, what happens, we need to change the block. We can solve this problem by making this block as a pin jointed, okay? Abhi aap dekh rahe honge ki this is rigidly attached with the lever. So if apart from uh, attaching it uh, with the lever as a rigid attachment, we can provide that attachment as pin jointed. So we can solve this problem by making this as a pin joint. So you can note this thing that hair pressure is uniform. And hair pressure is non-uniform. Or you can say P is non-uniform. Or not uniform. And why this is not uniform? Due to the long curvature. It's a hair curvature is less. So this is the angle here, which is two theta angle. So if this two theta is less than or equal to 45 degree, it is called as your short shoe. So I hope it is clear to you now and the working of block blade is clear. So now let us try to find out the torque capacity of the brake because in brake, our main objective is to determine the uh, torque capacity of the brake or the braking torque, okay? Both are the same things. So how we will do that? We will make a free body diagram of the system, which is shown here. So we are doing block break with short sugar respect. So what is your free body diagram? As you know, that free body diagram is that diagram uh, when we isolate all the elements from its surroundings, okay? And then we draw all the forces which are acting at the contact points. Now, these are the forces which are shown over here. This is the contact point between the brake drum and the friction lining. Okay, this is the contact point. So N is the normal force here and <clears throat> mu N is the frictional force. So frictional force is acting in the opposite direction of the direction of the drum. So here we are assuming that the 
drum is rotating in the clockwise direction. So you can see the direction of the drum and it is in clockwise direction. So we are assuming so this is an assumption that the drum is rotating in the clockwise direction. So in the opposite direction, mein, that is in this direction, aap dekhye, is taraf uski direction hai. so in the opposite direction, we are applying the frictional force. So mu1 is the frictional force. So in order to maintain the equilibrium, uh, the forces which are acting on the shoe, this is the block with shoe. Shoe basically kya hai? Jo friction lining usko shoe bol rahe So in the opposite direction, N is applying. And at this point, if mu n is acting in right hand side, so left hand side mein pe mu n lag jayega. So equilibrium ki condition aapko maintain karni hai. Pe. And P is the force which we are applying in order to stop the drum. And these are the distances uh, from the hinge point. Okay, this is your hinge. Now, uh, the distance is, uh, which is from the hinge, jahan pe force lag hai. So distance from the force to the hinge is your B distance. And uh, distance where your normal force is acting up to the hinge is A. And uh, this is the horizontal distance and vertical distance from the, uh, uh, from the mu n that is frictional force up to the hinge is your C. So A, B, C are three dimensions. So R, X and R, Y are the reaction forces here. Since it is a hinge, so hinge, it means it can only revolve at this particular point. It cannot move in X direction, neither in Y direction. Okay, so that's why we have two reaction forces that is R, X and R, Y. So I hope this free body diagram is clear to you now. Now, considering the forces acting on the drum, Okay, we are considering that the, all the forces are acting on the drum. So what will be your breaking torque? So breaking torque from here, you can easily calculate that is mu n into this distance. That is R. Okay, so mu n into R is your breaking torque. So we have formula. So where empty is breaking torque in Newton mm. R is the radius of the drum. Mu is the coefficient of friction and n is the normal force. Okay, normal force always acts perpendicular to the frictional force. Remember this thing. So apart from this now, how you sometimes it will be asked in the questions that find out the dimensions of the block. So in order to find out the dimensions of the block, as we know that uh, uh, if the pressure which is acting on the drum, uh, which is acting on the block, okay, is uh, pressure is force divided by area. So N is the normal force which is acting on the block into area of the block. So area of the block means iske kuch length hogi into iske kuch width hogi. So force divided by area will be the pressure. Okay. And from here, you can find out the value of N as pressure into area. That is L into W. Or wohi cheez yaha pe N is equal to P L into W. So where P is the intensity of the pressure or the permissible pressure between the block and the brake drum in Newton per mm square. L is the length of the block in mm and w is the width of the block in mm so by, from this formula you can easily find out the dimensions of the block okay and width of the block is generally in between uh, one fourth of the drum diameter to the uh, half of the drum diameter it means width of the block is greater than one fourth of the drum diameter and less than half of the drum diameter why in order to maintain the uniform pressure in between the uh, drum and the uh, block break okay so apart from this uh, if we have to find out the reaction forces so how we will find out the reaction forces so you know we have two reaction forces rx and ry rx is acting in horizontal direction and ry is acting in the vertical direction so total we have three equilibrium conditions one that is horizontal equilibrium condition uh, vertical and then moment at any point uh, will be equal to zero. So now we are applying uh, uh, the equilibrium conditions that uh, all the forces in e vertical and horizontal direction will be uh, equal to zero. So the key horizontal direction we the force like Rx or those are also mu n. So both are in opposite direction Rx and mu n. So we can write this as that Rx minus mu n will be equal to zero. So from here, you can find out the value of Rx as mu into n. Okay. From here, you can find out from horizontal equilibrium condition, you can find out Rx as mu into n. 
Now from vertical equilibrium condition, you can find out Ry. So how many forces are acting in, in vertical direction? One is Ry, one is N, okay? And another one is P. So from vertical, you can write as, uh, for vertical, from vertical, from vertical equilibrium condition, from vertical equilibrium condition, we can write, uh, that is Ry or PB Ry direction so P and this N is in downward direction so minus N will be equal to zero or यहाँ से Ry निकल जाएगा आपका that is Ry will be equal to N आप इस तरफ ले आइए positive हो जाएगा minus P so Ry will be N minus P देखिए वो यहाँ पे लिखा हुआ so I hope it is clear to you now then then the third equilibrium condition that is forces acting uh, on the lever about hinge point so what the third equilibrium condition is moment about any point will be equal to zero so we are taking the moments about the hinge that is this point so, okay so taking moment about hinge we are, we are getting the equation as that is p into b moment got the force into perpendicular distance so force that is p into b this is p into b and it is acting in the counterclockwise direction. So next is mu n into c. Again, it is in the counterclockwise direction. So uh, plus mu n into c. The key plus mu n into c. And is there any condition? Yes, n. So n is acting in the clockwise direction. So minus n into a. Minus n into a. So we look at the equation. Here our objective is to find out the actuating force p amount jo aap actuating force laga rahe ho us drum ko stop karne ke liye wo kitna hoga wo hi hum nikal rahe hain so from this equation now you can easily find out the value of p as this one that is a minus mu c divided by b into n aur ye aapko formula pata hona chahiye because this formula is very very important and we will use this formula in order to uh, solve our questions okay so you know very well that P is the actua actuating force here and uh, A, B and C, these are the, you know, they are the uh, different parameters. That is uh, distance A, B, C are the distances and mu is the quotient of friction over here. Now, depending upon the value of A, B and C and their magnitude, uh, we have three cases over here. Okay, so let us discuss all these three cases. First case is what will happen if uh, A is greater than mu C. Okay, in the previous equation, if A is greater than mu C, A is greater than mu C, it means uh, all the value will be positive. Matlab, just if you have 5 or 2, then 5 minus 2 is 3. So the total value of P is positive. Okay, we can say the overall value of P is coming positive. It means in order to stop the drum, we are applying a positive force. And this is a very good condition. It means uh, in order to stop the drum, we are applying the force. So this such type of condition is called as self-anarchizing self break. Okay, self-anarchizing break. What is called? Self-anarchizing break. Second, what will happen if A is equal to mu C? Okay, if A is equal to mu C, what will happen? A is equal to mu C, it means sara zero jaga, zero into B. So sara ka sara P is zero. It means the actuating force will be zero in order to stop the drum. So this is called as your self-locking condition. It means we are not applying any force and still the drum is getting stopped. So such type of condition is called as your self-locking condition. And this is not a desirable condition. We do not want such a break in no normal applications. Okay? In normal applications, we want that in order to stop the drum, there should be a positive force in order to stop the drum. Okay, otherwise what will happen? The brake will be out of uh, control of the operator. Okay, yes, how guys may. What will happen if A is less uh, than mu C? A is less than mu C means mu C is greater than uh, A. Yes, I will say that. So, what will happen if mu C is greater than? It means if it is 5 or 2. 2 minus 5 minus 3. It means P is now negative. Means you are not applying any force and the... Uh, the blocks are grabbing the drum automatically. Means this break is completely out of control of the operator. Completely out of control of the operator because he cannot apply it. So such breaks are very dangerous. And we also do not want such type of breaks. 
So these are the three uh, cases which will arise from the formula that is uh, P is equal to A minus Q C uh, divided by B into N. जो हमने बात बात करी, ठीक है ना? ये वाला formula. तो ये याद रखना है आपने formula और ये बहुत important formula है. Okay. So let us move ahead now. This is the second case. What will happen if the drum is rotating in the counterclockwise direction? Okay. Uh, in previous case, what we will considering that the drum is rotating in the clockwise direction. So तब वो formula आया था a minus mu c वाला. If the drum is rotating in the counterclockwise directions, all the forces will act in the opposite direction. मतलब n तो देखिए perpendicular लगेगा, लेकिन frictional force this mu n ये mu n होगा यहाँ पे. This mu n Will be in the opposite direction, or यहाँ पे भी ये mu n होगा. This mu n will be in the opposite direction. So the formula अब आपको दोबारा drive करने की जरूरत नहीं है. This is the formula which we will get. That is a plus mu c आ जाएगा divided by b into n. A, b, c once again are the uh, distances from the hinge point. तो क्या? जहाँ पे force लग रहा है, वहाँ तक का distance b है. जहाँ normal force लग रहा है, वो distance a है. ठीक है ना? और vertical distance आपका क्या है? C है from the contact point. So there is only one difference that we will get the formula as a plus mu c divided by v into n if the drum is rotating in the counterclockwise direction. So now let us try to solve this particular question. And after solving this question, you will be able to uh, design the break block break. Okay. This question says a single block break with the torque capacity of 15 newton meter as shown in the figure below. The coefficient of friction is 0.3 and the maximum pressure on the break lining is 1 newton per mm square. The width of the block is equal to its length. Calculate the actuating force. It means we have to find out P. The dimensions of the block and block dimensions are its length and width. The resultant hinge pin reaction. It means we have to find out hinge pin reaction and that is the resultant. Now, as we know that we have two types of hinge pin reactions. One is your Rx, which is acting in the horizontal direction. And another one is your R Y, which is acting in the vertical direction. So if we have to find out the resultant of uh, R X and R Y, so it will become R as under root of R X square plus R Y square. So this will be the formula uh, which we will use in order to find out the resultant hinge pin reaction. And finally, we have to calculate the rate of heat generated if the brake drum rotates at 50 rpm. Okay. So let us try to solve this question. And these are the uh, magnitude of the answers, uh, which is written over here. So like, you know, the answer of first actuating force will be 93.33 Newton and 18.26 uh, is the length. Since length and width are equal, so that's why it is 18.26 in multiply by 18.26 mm. So it will become your area. And third resultant hinge pin reaction will be 260 Newton. And finally, the rate of heat generation will be in what? Okay, 39.27. So let us try to solve this question and write the given conditions that we have. First of all, we have given as torque capacity of the brake as 15 Newton meter. So it will be written as 15,000 Newton mm. After that, coefficient of friction is given to us mu as 0.3 and then maximum pressure it means p is also given to us that is 1 newton per mm square and one more hint is given to us that is width is equal to its length now let us try to find out the actuating force which is p Now, as we know the formula that the drum is rotating in the clockwise direction and uh, the value for P will be A minus mu C. You can directly apply the formula if you know the formula A minus mu C divided by B into N. So this is the formula. Let us say it is equation number one. Now we will see uh, what are the given conditions that we have. So A, B and C are the uh, other distances from the hinge as we know so the distance from the force to the hinge is your b so it means b is your 200 plus 450 so b will become your 650 
mm. All the units are in mm here. Remember this thing. And B, okay, uh, B is 650 and A is your distance from the normal force. So at your contact point, normal force will act here at this particular point. And the distance from normal force to the hinge is your 200. So we can write A as 200 mm. And C is the vertical distance from the from contact point. So it will be your 60. Now we have A, B, C and mu is also given to us. Now there is only one unknown which is N. So let us try to find out this N. As we know, that your torque uh, capacity of the brake is given to us, which is mt. And we know this torque is a frictional torque, is a frictional force into drum radius. OK? So from here, you can calculate your n as mt divided by mu into r. Okay, so MT is the torque capacity of the brake, or this is also called as braking torque. So from this, from this formula, you can easily calculate the value of M. And we know MT is 15,000 Newton mm, mu is 0 0.3, and drum radius is already given to us. You can see in the figure, as it is 150 mm. So when you will solve this particular <coughs> Uh, equation you will get the value of n as 333.33 newton what is n n is a normal force so the unit of force is newton okay so remember this thing now now from equation number one we can write p as a minus mu c what is a 200 200 minus 0 0.3 into C is 60 divided by B, which is 650 into N. Okay, so easily you can calculate the value of B and it will be your 93.33. When you will solve this, you will get the value of actuating force as 93.33 Newton. Actuating force, force unit will be in Newton. So this is your first answer. Okay, this is your first answer. Now let us try to find out the second, the dimensions of the block. Okay. So dimensions of the block we will calculate as we know the pressure is given to us, which is one Newton per mm square. And we know that pressure will be equal to force at contact point the force is your normal force divided by area of the block, which is L into W. So you can write this as one is equal to N, which is 333.33 divided by L into W. So width is equal to block. So width is equal to, sorry, uh, length. So you can take length as width. So W into W, it will become W square. So from here, you can get the value of W square as 333.33. Or you can write W as and the root of this value. So when you will solve this, you will get 18.26 mm. Since length is equal to width, it will be equal to 18.26. Both values will be same. So this is your second answer. Okay, this will be your second answer and I hope it will be clear now. Third is your resultant hingeman reaction. Now, as I told you that resultant hinge pin reaction is R. So in order to find out R, we have to calculate Rx and Ry. And after getting the value of Rx and Ry, we will use this formula as R is equal to in the root of Rx square plus Ry square. Okay. So third point.
Now, as we know, uh, I already explained you why, while we were discussing about uh, uh, torque capacity of the block break with short shoe, and uh, we draw a free body diagram over there and we find out this Rx as mu into n. Okay, so from this equation, you can directly calculate Rx as 0 0.3 into 333.33. Okay, so it will be your 100 Newton and your Ry will be equal to N minus P and it will be 333.33 minus your P will be 93.33. When you will solve this, you will get your value as 240 uh, Newton. Okay, you will get value of 240 Newton. Now, calculate your resultant hinge pin reaction as Rx square plus Ry square. So it will be 260 Newton. So this is your third answer. Okay. Let us now try to solve the final uh, result, which we have to find out that is the rate of heat generation. <clears throat> so rate of heat generation, you know, it will be equal to the frictional force, rate of heat, you can write rate of heat, generation will be equal to frictional force mu into n into average velocity okay average velocity so mu into n as we know we have mu and we have all also n now we have to find out the average velocity and average means we have to take the average of uh, initial and final so initial, let us find out the initial velocity first. So initial velocity, as we know that the drum is rotating at uh, 50 RPM. So it has uh, some angular velocity. And in order to find out this velocity, let us say it is V1, we know that it will be R into omega. R is the radius of the drum. Further, we can write this as R into omega will be two pi n by 60. Okay, because it has some angular velocity. So if you <clears throat> further now solve this particular equation, R is the radius of the drum. And uh, radius of drum is as we know 150 mm. Okay, 150, this is in mm. So velocity as we are calculating in meter per second. So convert this 150 uh, mm into meter because we are now calculating velocity in meter per second. So it will be divided by 1000, okay, into, 2 pi n, n is the RPM of the drum, which is rotating at uh, 50 RPM. It is given to us, divided by 60. Okay, when you will solve this, you will get the value of V1 as, V1 as 0 point, 0 point 0.7854. Units will be in meter per second, because we have already converted this particular mm into meter. Okay, so this value is in mm. If it be divided with 1000, it will, uh, you know, convert it into meter. And what is your final velocity? Final velocity, as we know, we have to stop the drum by applying a force P. So final velocity, that is V2, it will be equal to zero. So we can write, therefore, average velocity, average velocity will be equal to V1 plus V2 divided by two. So it will be 0 0.7854 plus 0 divided by 2. And when you will solve this, you will get value as 0 0.3927 meter per second. This is your average velocity. So now we have got the average velocity. So we can easily calculate the rate of heat generation as mu n into average velocity. Therefore, you can write the rate of heat generated rate of heat will be equal to mu into n that is 0 0.3 into n 
this is mu into n into average velocity that is 0 0.3927 meter per second. So you will get your value as 39.27. 39.27. Okay, it will be in Newton meter per second because velocity is in meter per second. Frictional force will be in Newton. This is meter per second. So Newton meter per second. And Newton meter per second ko aap log watt bhi likhte ho. Or it will be equal to 39.27 watt. Ye bhi sakte ho aap. So this will be your answer. And uh, we have find out all the all the values which were asked to us that you have to find out uh, the actuating force value. After that, you will have to find out your uh, uh, dimensions of the block, then resultant uh, hinge pin reaction and the rate of your generation. So I hope this question is now clear to you. And uh, the block break with short true designing will also be clear to you. And if still you have any doubt, you can ask me and you can text me. So thank you so much.